All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tiffany Frost, and I am the New Growth uh, Women's Business Center Director. And um, I am located, my office is in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. Um, we serve um, 13 Missouri counties and two Kansas counties um, for our business center um, from Barton to Vernon. And then the two Kansas is uh, Bourbon and Crawford. Um, we assist with business counseling, business planning, startup, credit building, um, accessing capital for your business. Uh, we focus on women-owned businesses, but we will um, help and counsel, counsel any business um, or entrepreneur that is looking to start a business um, in our area. So if you have um, any interest or uh, want to start that up, you can contact me. Um, today, we um, have got Kelly Asbury with SBDC. She's going to talk a little bit about her program. And then Rom Bassnett um, is here with SBA, and he's going to be talking about the PPP forgiveness and the idle loan. So, Kelly? Thank you, Tiffany. I am Kelly Asbury. I'm the director for the Small Business Development Center at State Beer Community College. Uh, like Tiffany, we've got a region that we cover uh, 12 counties. However, they're located, SBDCs are located throughout Missouri and of course, um, throughout the United States as well. So very much like the Women's Business Center, we also do business consulting, one-to-one -one business consulting at no cost to you due to our grant funding. Um, we also provide no cost and low cost trainings at, for many, many areas of business. Um, essentially, we consult entrepreneurs and small business owners at any level of the game. So conceptual, I, I've got this great idea uh, through startup and really uh, expansion, succession planning for, for those who have been in business 30 years and don't know how to get out uh, and, and really anything in between. We've got tools and resources to assist with those too. And that is what I have. I'll hand it back to Tiffany. All right, thank you, Kelly. Um, all right, now we're gonna turn it over to Ram Bassnett with SBA um, and let's uh, give him our undivided attention. All right, thank you, uh, Tiffany, and thank you, Kelly. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ram Bassnett here with the Small Business Administration uh, Springfield, Missouri branch office. Uh, we are uh, primarily responsible for 28 counties in South, uh, Southwest Missouri for SBA program delivery. Today, I'm going to talk about um, PPP direct forgiveness and also the economic injury disaster loans. I have um, uh, two sets of slides and a couple of web pages I'll walk you all through. We'll make sure um, after the end of the presentation, uh, we will share the slides and also um, links with certain information with you all. And then I will uh, take questions if we have time towards the end of the presentation. With that, I'm gonna um, stop sharing my video to uh, conserve bandwidth, and then I'm sharing my screen here real quick. Okay. All right, Tiffany or Kelly, if one of you could let me know if you can see my screens. I can see it. All right, perfect, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about um, PPP, COVID revenue reduction uh, score and direct forgiveness. The information is accurate as of this morning. Um, and then um, this program is currently available. So let's, so loans $150,000 or less represent 93% of outstanding PPP loans. Uh, approximately uh, 6.5 million loans remain to be forgiven. I'm sure that number is, um, has gone down um, now because the, the program is up and running. And uh, many borrowers will have to begin make, making payments on these loans in the very near future. So SP has developed solutions to assist uh, with this. Um, the first solution is COVID revenue reduction score. And the next is the direct forgiveness. Now let's talk about uh, PPP direct forgiveness. So for lenders that choose to opt in, SP is allowing borrowers to submit forgiveness applications for first draw and second draw loans using SBA platform. Uh, it provides a single secure location for borrowers to apply for loan forgiveness using uh, electronic equivalent of SBA form 3508S. Uh, platform will notify lenders when borrower has applied for forgiveness. Uh, in the platform, 
um, lender reviews forgiveness application and issues forgiveness decisions to SBA. So basically for loans $150,000 and less for both first draw and second draw, uh, if the lender has opted in, borrowers have the ability to apply for forgiveness directly through SBA's um, uh, platform. Uh, based on um, people who have used the platform, uh, borrowers have been able to apply for forgiveness um, within six minutes uh, on average, okay? So there are certain scenarios where borrowers must submit forgiveness application directly to lender. Um, that's when a lender does not opt in to use the direct borrower forgiveness process. The borrower's PPP loan amount is greater than $150,000. Uh, borrowers does not agree with the data as provided by the SBA system of record or cannot validate the identity in the platform. Um, for any other region where the platform rejects the borrower's submission, uh, they would have to use existing processes in place to apply for forgiveness uh, through their bank. All right. PPP COVID revenue reduction score. As um, you all know, uh, for second drop PPP loans, uh, the borrowers would have to substantiate 25% uh, reduction in revenue um, compared to 2019. And the SBA has provided a revenue reduction score. So SBA um, has scored all the second draw PPP loan population of $150,000 and less. And the score was developed using current data on economic recovery and return of businesses to, op to operational status. Uh, like I said before, SPA will score all second drop PPP loans, $150,000 or less, and will be visible to all lenders in the platform, uh, even to those that do not opt into direct forgiveness. And uh, this score can be used on an optional basis. Uh, if uh, a lender or the borrower uh, chooses to use this pass or fail score, uh, so for the past scores, uh, they do not have to substantiate that 25% revenue reduction or provide documentation for that. Okay, so when score validates the borrower's revenue reduction, um, if the borrower has not already provided documentation to the lender, the use of score will satisfy the requirement for the borrower to document that 25% revenue reduction. However, if the borrower has already provided documentation to the lender, lender will make forgiveness decision based on the documentation. Now, when the score does not validate the borrower's revenue reduction, meaning um, if the, the second draw PPP loan has a failed score. Uh, if borrower has not already provided documentation to the lender, borrower must submit, um, provide documentation either directly to the lender, if the lender did not opt into direct forgiveness or upload, upload to platform, if lender has opted in and lender will make forgiveness decision based on documentation. If the borrower has already provided documentation to the lender, and again, the lender will make forgiveness decision based uh, on the documentation. So regardless of whether the lender opts in to direct forgiveness, the following applies to all borrowers. Documentation overrides the score. If the lender has documentation that the borrower did not have a 25% revenue reduction, a satisfactory score will not make the borrower eligible. Lender may not make the forgiveness decision based on the score. Uh, if the lender knows the borrower is ineligible, uh, the lender may not approve forgiveness. Okay, let's uh, go through the direct forgiveness user guide. And again, uh, I'll try to make this a little uh, quick uh, as you will all get the uh, slides. And also um, when we send uh, some links, you'll get a, a, a complete uh, user guide for direct forgiveness as well. Again, um, direct forgiveness portal registration. You have to register yourself uh, in the portal. You have to submit application. Uh, you have to sign documentation through uh, DocuSign. And then uh, you, you have the ability to look at the applications that you have submitted for forgiveness. And then there are some resources. Okay. Direct forgiveness portal. Yeah, and again, uh, you have to register. Uh, the portal can be accessed at directforgiveness.sba.gov. Again, we'll make these slides available to you. Um, like I said before, the portal allows PPP borrowers whose loans are $150,000 or less to apply for forgiveness directly to the SBA. Um, and you can apply for both first row and second row. 
as long as your loans are under $150,000. Uh, we recommend that you use Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome browsers um, for optimal experience. New registration will be required uh, to utilize this portal. Again, uh, you, you would follow prompts uh, as you log into the portal and create your accounts. And again, I'm not gonna go through uh, each steps here, but uh, you get the idea. You have to create a username, password, uh, the system has to validate your identity and things like that. And again, these are just instructions um, on, uh, you know, how to create registration, uh, your account and password and things like that. Once you provide and verify your email address, it cannot be changed. So be mindful of that and provide email address that you have access to. Once registration is complete uh, and confirmation emails have been acknowledged, applicants can access the PPP direct forgiveness portal with their user ID and password. And then uh, all platform users will encounter two-factor authentication upon login. A US-based mobile phone number must be used. The provider must not be a VOIP phone carrier or internet phones, uh, just because uh, you'll receive a text with a code um, as, as part of the two-factor authentication. So to submit application, uh, you know, you'd log in and then you would see what you, I, I'm seeing here in this screen. You would start new forgiveness request, or you also have an option to take a guided tour if you want to learn more about the platform. And then uh, once you click and start new forgiveness request, uh, you would submit your um, EIN, SSN, or ITIN. This would be the unique identifier that you use to apply for your PPP loan. And then you would have to submit your SPA loan number and hit uh, find, find your loan. Once the system finds your application, it pre-populates certain information. And if there is uh, an error in, in the pre-populated information, you'd have to work with your lender to have that corrected. And again, you just follow the prompts and um, select appropriate titles, contact information, business industry, and so forth. And um, you would select a covered period. And again, there are drop downs, um, gross receipts for 2019, for 2020, and things of that nature. And then again, a number of employees, uh, amount of payroll and, and demographics and, um, and information that's requested by those fields. And you also have the ability to um, uh, upload documents. Uh, the system will notify you if uh, you have to upload documents and things like that. And again, I'm just following through the, the prompts here. Okay, once you uh, provide all the relevant information, you um, submit your application and continue to electronic signature. And then um, missing items will be outlined by the system prior to submission. Um, the submit button will be inactive until all missing items have been corrected. Application signing for the portal. So you would um, select I agree and then um, hit continue. It's a DocuSign process. Pop-up will allow uh, systematic drawn or uploaded sign signatures to be applied. Um, you would initial sign and hit finish. However, if you decline to sign, um, so you, after reviewing the application and prior to finishing, if there are any corrections that are necessary, you can decline to sign. And once you decline to sign, uh, you have to wait a couple of minutes, about five minutes, uh, and then uh, the system will allow you to make uh, necessary changes and then you would follow the prompts uh, to uh, make necessary corrections and then hit submit. Okay, once the uh, applications are submitted, you'll receive this thank you for submitting a request a notification. And then um, if the borrower correction is required, uh, you can withdraw the request as well. Um, corrections details are located in a summary page. You can withdraw your uh, forgiveness application and then go back and make necessary corrections and, and submit again. And once an application moves to SPA decision, um, 
the bill letter will be available within the application portal for borrowers as confirmation of forgiveness. And sometimes your accountants might uh, ask you for this. There are direct forgiveness portal resources. Um, and again, we'll share the slides and links. Um, the directforgiveness.spa.gov is the portal. There is also a, a hotline that's 1 877 552 2692. And then there are also frequently asked questions for both lenders and um, borrowers that you can navigate. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, I'm going to stop sharing here and um, I'm going to go through the EIDL loans. And again, I'll take questions towards the end. I just have a couple of slides for the EIDL loans. All right, Tiffany, can you uh, let me know if you can see the EIDL slides? Yep. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about COVID economic injury disaster loans. Many of you are probably already familiar with this loan program. Uh, it's a, the COVID EIDL program is a federal small business loan program designed to support small businesses to recover from the COVID-19 induced economic recession by providing accessible and borrower friendly capital. Um, the program currently offers two categories of small business loans, uh, micro and full. Uh, micro is $1,000 to $25,000. Uh, no collateral or personal guarantee is required for micro loans, and you can submit these applications via your uh, mobile phone. For full EIDL loan, which is $25,000 up to $500,000, uh, collateral is required for loans um, more than $25,000. And then personal guarantee is required for loans greater than $200,000. Uh, Mobile applications are not permitted for uh, loans above uh, $25,000. So the, the key difference between the micro and full categories are the loan size, uh, corresponding collateral and personal guarantee requirements, and also the ability to apply for micro using your cell phone. But then for full loans, you would have to use your uh, other devices. Okay, let's talk about um, terms of these loans. So for the COVID economic injury disaster loans, um, the interest rate is 3.75% for business, 2.75% for nonprofits. It's a 30 year fixed rate. Uh, the deferment uh, for loans made in 2021, the deferment will be 18 months. Uh, for loans made in 2020, deferment is 24 months. And again, um, for micro loans, um, no collateral required, no personal guarantee required. But then for full term loans, which is $25,000, up to 500,000 um, collateral for loans greater than 25,000, and then personal guarantee for loans greater than 200,000. The use of funds is uh, normal operating expenses, payroll, rent, cost of goods sold, uh, commercial debt, meaning uh, your monthly payments on those debts, uh, including principal and interest. Working capital. Okay, so benefits to small business owners. Uh, and again, uh, the repayment, that the borrower friendly terms can extend payments over 30 years at a low interest rate. Uh, this results in a reduced payment burden relative to market options, particularly for the micro COVID EI deal, uh, allowing small businesses to focus on recovery. So all this is saying is uh, it's, a, it's a very low interest, 3.75%, 30 year fixed, and your monthly payments become significantly smaller than uh, regular commercial loans. So to put things in perspective, if someone was, was to get a $10,000 COVID EIDL microloan uh, over 30 years um, amortization, uh, their monthly payments would be around $46 a month. Uh, let's talk about use of funds. And again, um, as it relates to benefits to small business owners, um, the flexible use of funds allows small business owners to meet immediate needs. Uh, this includes making debt payments on debt accrued before or during the pandemic. Uh, you can, you know, there are some examples here, like paying off credit card balances for your business, increased wages, accumulated rent, increased cost of goods sold. Again, let's talk about eligibility. Um, the, you know, a business will be considered small if it has less than 500 employees, it includes sole proprietors, uh, self-employed individuals, small business owners, uh, credit score of at least 570, and you have to provide evidence of being in or invested in launching business by January, 2020. 
So basically, you have to be in operation as of January 31, 2020. Okay, so um, application steps, again, a mobile friendly application process for micro loans, uh, that's up to 25,000. Um, estimated timeline has improved after process changes. The deadline to apply for SBA's economic injury disaster loan is December 31, 2021. And uh, loan amount. So there, is, there actually is an economic injury formula SBA uses and um, SBA offers up to a maximum amount and borrowers have the ability to request, uh, to accept that amount or request for less if they want less. And the way they are gonna look at um, the economic injury uh, amount SBA offers is your annual revenue, less cost of goods sold times two, that's your eligible loan amount for two years worth of economic injury. They're gonna look at your tax transcripts uh, primarily from uh, 2019. And then there might be some instances where borrowers uh, were in operation as of uh, January 31, 2020, uh, there are specific formulas that they use for that. And again, so to give an example, if, my, if I'm a small business owner and my 2019 annual revenue was 200,000 as um, um, you know, provided in my IRS tax transcripts and my 2019 annual cost of goods sold is 100,000, then that's revenue less cost of goods sold is 200,000 less 100,000 times two, that's uh, 200,000, that's the amount SBO was gonna offer me for my EID loan if I meet other requirements. Uh, required documents, uh, federal income taxes or business financial statements. Uh, you, you would also have to fill out IRS form 45060 when you uh, apply for these loans. Uh, that way SBA can um, get the tax transcripts for your business. There have been certain uh, improvements on these EID loans. Um, the loan program had uh, changed um, different groups within the SBA and there have been adoption of technologies and things like that. So, um, you know, the loan processing timelines um, and pro productivity has increased significantly. Uh, by August 10th, the over uh, 600,000 backlog of loan increase applications were closed out in record time. And then again, uh, the customer service have enhanced features where uh, you can leave your phone number and you will get a call back. And then the SBA is investing um, in outreach efforts to. Um, you know, promote uh, COVID EIDL programs in our communities. To apply for uh, EIDL, you apply online directly through SBA's website, uh, that's sba.gov slash EIDL. Uh, and then there's also a customer service center to assist you with uh, any questions related to economic injury disaster loans. That is 1-800-659-2955. And then if you have received a decline um, and, uh, you know, you can reach out to local SP district offices. They may be able to tell you why it was declined, uh, but be mindful that the EID loans are not processed locally at local SP district offices. Okay. Again, the program uh, is available until uh, December 31, 2021, or until the funds uh, uh, get exhausted. Okay. Um, with that, uh, let me sh share a couple of web pages here, which I think will help you. And then I'll open up for Q and A's. Okay. So the first one is the, uh, and again, we'll share these links with you all. Uh, Tiffany, can you tell, let me know if you can see the, the, the web page here? Yes. Okay, good. Just making sure. Okay, so the first here is um, the lender frequently asked questions on direct forgiveness, and then also borrower frequently asked questions on direct forgiveness. If you have any questions, uh, your questions are most likely already answered. You just click here, and there are many questions that have already been answered. And then uh, if you click on this first, um, uh, question, you can actually um, download uh, the user guide uh, if you want for uh, PPP direct forgiveness. Uh, similarly, for COVID economic injury disaster loans, uh, there is a frequently asked question as of August 4th, 2021, which have answered many questions related to EID loans uh, and, and things of that nature. I will make sure we share the links of this with you. Now let's take a minute to talk about uh, targeted EIDL advance and supplemental EIDL uh, targeted advance. Um, these are um, grants 
Now, when we promoted these uh, webinars, we talked about up to 15,000 um, funding that uh, borrowers does not need to be repaid. So let, let's dive, uh, dive into it, right? So to receive an advance, you must first apply for a COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan. You do not need to accept the loan or be approved for the loan to receive an advance. Once you apply for the loan, SBA will invite you via email to apply for one of the advanced programs if your business is located in a low income area. Okay, so there is not a place to apply for grant loan. The way this works is you apply for the economic injury disaster loan. You do not have to be accepted for the loan. You can decline the loan that is offered to you. If you are located in a low income community, um, as described by um, the regulation, which I'll go over here uh, real quick, then you may get a link to apply for targeted and supplemental EIDL advance. If you meet certain requirements for targeted EIDL advance, you may get uh, up to $10,000. And for supplemental EIDL advance, you may get up to $5,000. The, the targeted and supplemental EIDL advance are um, grant monies. Now, when you apply for EIDL, um, you know, the, the team must uh, be able to, to validate that you are in business as of January 31, 2020. I have had instances where some of these business owners were uh, in a low income community. However, the EIDL team could not validate that they were in business as of January 31, 2020, uh, which is a requirement to apply for the EIDL. Uh, that's why uh, they're, uh, they didn't receive any invite for targeted and supplemental advance, okay? Now, there are certain requirements for targeted advance. Uh, one of them is um, the borrower's um, business have to be in a low-income community. And um, to help applicants determine if they are in a low-income community, as defined in Section 45DE of the Internal Revenue Code, there is a mapping tool. You can click this mapping tool, put your business address, and see whether or not you are in a low-income community. Another requirement is you have to demonstrate that more than 30% reduction in revenue during an eight-week period beginning on March 2, 2020 or later. And then the next is you have to have 300 or fewer employees. So these are the requirements for targeted EIDL advance. Uh, low-income community, 30% uh, reduction, and uh, 300 or fewer employees. And again, we'll share links to this to you. Uh, that way you can um, educate yourself on whether or not some of these programs, um, you would be eligible for some of these programs. Okay, so for supplemental targeted advance, uh, th there are uh, newer requirements. You have to be in a low income community. You have to prove more than 50% economic loss and you have to have 10 or fewer employees. And you also have to qualify for targeted EIDL advance. And if you think about it, uh, if uh, someone meets all the requirements for supplemental targeted advance, they would uh, also meet requirements for targeted EIDL advance. Okay. Now there are frequently asked questions. Uh, you know, we have had a few inquiries here in our local offices where the EIDL funds, uh, the targeted and supplemental EIDL funds were written by their banks for whatever reason, and here are instructions on how to request uh, re-evaluation. And uh, for both EIDL loans and also targeted and supplemental EIDL advance, uh, if they are declined, you'll receive a decline letter with explanation on why it was declined and also a process to apply for reconsideration for EIDL loans and re-evaluation for targeted and supplemental EIDL advances. Okay, with that, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing here and open up for any questions you might have for uh, PPP direct forgiveness and also the economic injury disaster loans. Okay, we have a question um, from Alicia. She said, I was told by SBA increased department, they're backlogged with regard to increasing EIDL loans. Is their direct email ask status questions to loan officers? I see. So to check the status on your loan uh, increase or loan applications, you can certainly reach out to SBA's uh, Office of Disaster Assistance Customer Service Hotline, uh, which is 1-800-659 2955. You can also send an email to disastercustomerservice at sba.gov. Uh, one word, disastercustomerservice at sba.gov. 
uh, to check status on your application. And if you are uh, in one of the 28 counties in Southwest Missouri, you can suddenly send us an email or give us a call with your um, application number and your inquiry. And we, like I said, we have a read-only access to the platform, so we, can, we may be able to provide you some information if, if there has been an update. But be mindful that we do not process these uh, applications locally in our uh, local district offices. These are handled by the SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance Team. We only have read-only access and we can tell you uh, what we can see, but we cannot expedite. Uh, we do not have the authority or the ability to expedite these processes. So with the EIDL loan you, in the advance, so you said the 10, thousand or five thousand dollars if you qualify for the advanced is grant monies so that does not have to be paid back that is correct, correct. yes if someone qualifies for um, targeted EI deal advance they'll get ten thousand dollars and if they qualify for supplemental EI deal advance they'll get additional five thousand um, dollars and given they meet all program requirements and uh, they get those fifteen thousand dollars it does not have to be repaid and that's whether you accept the um, loan amount that you, yeah. Yes, um, you, you, uh, you can, you can uh, reject uh, the EID loan offered to you by SBA. You do not have to uh, be qualified uh, for EID loan as long as you meet program requirements um, for a targeted and supplemental advance, uh, then, uh, you know, it's a grant. Targeted and supplemental advance is a grant. EIDL is an actual loan. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tiffany, Alicia Any has her hand raised in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Alicia. Correct. Okay. Do you want to ask your question? She has her hand raised. Is there a way to let her speak? I, I cannot hear uh, if someone is asking a question. Um, but, uh, she needs the, uh, Alicia needs the Missouri SBA telephone number. Can you uh, recite that again? Yeah, sure. Uh, so if you're located here in Southwest Missouri, that number is, um, um, let's see, hold on just one second here, 417-889-6912. Uh, That's my desk phone number. And again, um, you know, we have congressionally mandated counties. Uh, SBA has two offices in Missouri, uh, one in uh, Kansas City with a branch office in Springfield. And then there is another office in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, another question. Oops, yeah. Uh, any word on when the increase from 500K to 2 million is going to go into effect for the EIDL? Uh, we are awaiting additional guidance on that. And uh, we, we are actually waiting for the interim final rules. And as we get uh, formal guidance from SPA, we'll reach out to our communities to let people know. Uh, we'll have, most likely have similar webinars. But as of right now, we, we have not received uh, formal guidance yet. Okay, how can we check the status of loans in reconsideration? Same pro processes that I described before. Uh, you can certainly reach out to uh, SBA's Office of uh, Disaster Assistance uh, at that hotline and then e that email. And you can also reach out to our local offices and they may be able to provide you uh, if there have been any movement in your application. Like I said, be mindful. Um, we cannot make any changes to your application or uh, extradite your uh, request. And you're sending out that information in the, the slides in the PowerPoint, right? So uh, I'll send you uh, SPS Find Local Assistance. So with that link, what you can do is you can put your zip code and you can reach out to the nearest SB office that serves your area. Okay, um, another question. I was approved for the first, the EIDL on 8-2. My status on the portal says modification approved, the amount and status funding. However, no funds dispersed. I'm unsure when or if I'll be funded. 
Any insight? Well, it's hard for me to tell uh, uh, because I do not know the totality of circumstances. Uh, and like I said, if you are here in Southwest Missouri, don't hesitate to reach out to us with your application number and we can do some more research and let you know what we can see. Um, just to clarify, the EIDL loan, not the advance or targeted advance, does still have to be repaid and is not eligible for forgiveness or any portion. Is that correct? That is correct. EIDL is a loan. It, it is not um, it is not forgivable loan. It is a loan. Um, how do O get the ODA form P-022 target loan grant? They use gross funds, not adjust, adjusted gross question. So basically the, the calculation they're using is um, your, they're gonna look at your 2019 tax transcripts and um, your gross receipts less cost of goods sold times two. That is the formula that's being used. And regarding that form, um, please send me an email and we'll, we'll try to do some research on where to find that form. I, I do not know the, the, all the details of why that form was required and what program office is requiring it. So, uh, once I get more information, uh, we can um, uh, certainly help you with that. And then we also have Christian Tadani, who is a, a staff here um, on the call with us. And I, I believe he just shared his uh, email and phone number on the chat box as well. Uh, yes, he did. Um, we have been in business only a few months. What kind of help should I be looking for since I'm not eligible for EIDL? And then she's a woman starting a small business. And yes, I will be helpful. And I will put my email address in the chat, um, Jessica, to um, for you to get in contact with me. But if you would like to answer what assistance she could be looking for. Yes. So uh, if you are new starting a business, I, I, um, I certainly encourage you to reach out to our resource partners like the Women's Business Center, uh, um, Tiffany Frost. Um, uh, the Small Business Development Center. We, we have Kelly Asbury here from State Fair Community College. Uh, there are Veterans Business Outreach Center and also uh, SCORE mentors. Uh, certainly work with our resource partners. Uh, some of the loan programs SBA has uh, might be of value to you, like our regular 7A loan programs, uh, which our resource partners are familiar with. Uh, you might also uh, take advantage of, uh, potentially take advantage of micro loans. Uh, micro loans are, uh, they go up to $50,000. Uh, these are administered by uh, micro lenders, which are nonprofits that have relationship with SBA. And there are two micro lenders that operate here in Southwest Missouri. Uh, one is Justin Peterson, based out of St. Louis. The other one is Forge Financial, based out of Arkansas. If you need contact information of uh, micro lenders, uh, certainly reach out to our resource partners or myself, and I'll be more than happy to provide you that information. Carrie, I did not see your question. Oh, there it is. Uh, just to clarify the EI deal. Yeah, we did answer that question. All right, thank you, Kelly, for putting your information in there as well. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Yes, Carrie, yours was answered. So Carrie was asked about, um, you still have to repay not eligible for forgiveness on any portion of the EIDL loan. Yes, that is correct. It is a loan and you have to um, pay that back, uh, any of it that is the loan. It's not the advanced or targeted. There is no forgiveness on that. Okay, any other questions? Um, in the chat right now, um, there's uh, email addresses and links to answers for loans. Um, 
they posted a link, Christian did, of connecting with SBA lenders. Yeah, so my suggestion to you all is at any rate, if you go to sba.gov, uh, there is a plethora of information uh, related to small businesses from hey, how do I write a business plan to uh, what kind of funding opportunity is available out there, uh, how to get connected with a lender, if you want to learn a little more about federal contracts or international trade, there is a host of information there, including, um, uh, you know, self-paced uh, online um, trainings and things like that. SBA.gov is the landing page. Uh, okay, Stephen, he says the ODA form P022 standard resolution was, is required to process his application. So just, does he need to get a hold of somebody about that question? So um, after people receive their EID loan, uh, you know, loan officers might be following up with some of his borrowers uh, and asking for additional documents, uh, compliance related. And if, you, if someone has requested certain forms with you, it probably is best to uh, ask with that individual where to get that form. And Dallas, somewhat touched on already, what is the average time for funds to be deposited for the EIDL increase? I've been waiting a month, yet most folks say it only takes a few days. Not sure if there's a hang up. So Dallas, um, is it right to say that you have been approved, but the funds have not been deposited is kind of the way I'm reading that? Correct. So he's been approved, but the funds have not been deposited. I see. So um, if I give you a timeline, um, I'm lying because I really don't know uh, what that timeline looks like. Um, the, the guidance that we have received is uh, these will be processed in the order received. And, um, you know, there are many variables, right? It's a case by case basis, uh, you know, um, so it's, it's hard to tell. But uh, if you want to, us to do further research on what's, uh, what's been going on with your application, uh, and if you are here in Southwest Missouri, certainly reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to uh, do further research and see what we can find. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? I hope I got everybody's questions. Like I said, there's lots of information in the chat for phone numbers, email address, references to answer questions, get more information. Okay. Bye. If I might interject just real quickly, okay. um, versus trying to write everything down in that chat, if if our attendees will go over to the right down at the bottom where, we, where they would normally type a message, there's three little dots. You can click on those three dots and save that chat to your computer, and that way you have all that information. That's all. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, Kelly, do you have anything else for today? I do not. I appreciate you letting me be a part of this. Ram, you did an outstanding job as always, and Tiffany, you as well. Thank you, thank you, Kelly, for your okay. kind words. Ram, do you have anything else to add? Any any other information you'd like to to give? Well, um, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar today. Uh, as we get more uh, guidance on uh, you know, um, additional information about EIDL or any of our programs, uh, we'll be conducting uh, additional webinars. Uh, we usually send out a newsletter. Uh, if you have not subscribed to SBA's newsletter, please go to sba.gov forward slash updates and put your email address there uh, based on the zip code that you provide, uh, local offices that conduct outreach you can customize what kind of newsletter that you receive from SPA. And I recognize these are very challenging times and I, I, you certainly have uh, my sympathies for some of the challenges related to those EIDL, uh, but rest assured that we are doing everything that we can within the scope of our roles to alleviate some of that here locally and also uh, yeah, um, highly, um, high level, uh, at the high level up in SPA headquarters. 
And uh, I thank our partners. Uh, you know, these are very challenging times and we would not ha have been able to achieve what we did without your support. Uh, thank you, Kelly and Tiffany. And, um, you know, we're here to help and um, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, thank you, Ram. Thank you right. for everybody that attended today. Um, we appreciate it. Um, from New Growth Women's Business Center and um, New Growth Economic Development, we appreciate your time. Uh, check out our website at um, newgrowthwbc.org and uh, look for future webinars to come. Um, thank you, everybody, and have a great rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. -bye. Bye.